We're back with another early rankings episode. We are counting it down, our top 10 early running back rankings. Don't miss a minute. Weigh in in the comments and subscribe below. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Thursday episode of the Fantasy Footballers. Jason Moore is here. Hello. Mike Wright also Hello. came to work today. I thought we were doing like a accent thing. Ah. That's an accent? Yeah. Oh, was there? Oh, was it like a ally? Uh, yeah, I was oh, okay. going uh, Cockney. Sounded like uh, like an obnoxious accent. Hey, I bet. <laughs> uh, I'm Andy Holloway. Scene. <laughs> Top ten running backs on the show today. Early rankings. We just counted it down from twenty to eleven on the Tuesday show. Excited to get into the top ten. And um, you know the draft is 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 now one week away. Very soon. One week. So that should be really, really fun, especially if you join us on draft night. We'll be live on NFL Plus at the end of round one. So you'll want to catch that, a live uh, fantasy reaction special, Thursday, April 25th. So please, stop by. It will be a good time. Yeah. How are you doing today, Jay? I'm doing great. Yeah. I'm I'm very excited for this week leading up to the draft. There's always such crazy news that ends up coming out, all sorts of nonsensical things leaked about players. Oh, this team is totally into this guy now. This is the week to plug them ears. Okay? Plug your ears is just a bunch of smoke and nonsense. Uh, Until the day before. The day before the draft, then all of a sudden some real stuff sometimes gets leaked out. It's tough. I mean, uh, the stuff I don't like is definitely nonsense. Right. The stuff that I do like, it's probably true. I like how every year we can get to the draft and go, wait a minute. They didn't do they, anything. They lied again. They were making that up. We are doing draft predictions next week. Super fun. So that will be, I know you're really excited to get a bunch of them wrong again. Like we all will. Well, we usually get most of them wrong. And by we, I mean the entire planet. <laughs> um, every mock draft or everyone yeah. out there, you see like the best mock drafts of all time. Just the majority is still wrong. Um, but I think we do a pretty good job. The Ultimate Draft Kit available right now. It will be updated for the third time following the NFL Draft. And so, Dynasty Leagues with the UDK Plus, you want to check that out, ultimatedraftkit.com. We do have an announcement. <laughs> and dare I say, this is an opportunity to remind you why you should listen to all the episodes. Yeah? Because sometimes we say stuff that we only say once. This is one of those moments. And we don't we don't even tweet it. Nope. We don't even we don't email, we don't tweet, we don't talk about it ever again. Not We're, before, not after. We are here for our fans. And we know that you listening right now are our fans. And so, we are seeking help. We are looking for new writers. We do this once a year where we uh, bring in a couple more people to the writing team. We have a great uh, group here. We were just on a big Zoom call. It's a big family last night. Um, it is an awesome uh, time writing together. We are looking for the best and the brightest. And uh, if that is you, you can go to footclanhelp.com. We are only saying this once. Uh, you can apply there. Hopefully you have some writing samples. Uh, some writing samples. No, is it here it says, for Kyle's sanity. Please submit a writing sample. To let us know yeah. you can write. I would highly recommend you do that. It is the most important part of the writing job. Yeah. I mean, the writing. We're we're, uh, we're looking for good peoples with great football knowledge. Probably around four new writers. Yeah, I mean, it really depends on who applies. You know, if, if five great ones apply, then we'll have five. If one great one applies, sorry, we got one. So this is the only mention of it, footclanhelp.com. 
we'll be going through all the applications uh, to join the writing staff, and that will be uh, that'll be fun. It's always uh, a, an exciting time to meet some new people and add them to the team. Going through the submissions is one of the most fun worst times that you'll ever have. Mm. It, it's like because you with the reading and the words, right? You're <laughs> yeah. not. Yeah, yeah. you see me. Yeah, yeah. I, I I feel seen. Feel seen. Um. Yeah, it's just there's there's Send so Jason many things. A video <laughs> of you reading yeah. your article. Yes, read me your words. Oh no, so somebody's that... going to do that no, now. Oh my bad. I'm not the one always going. I check uh, a couple layers left. All right, quick question of the day: What is one dream draft pick you want to happen during the NFL draft? Anything you want for whatever reason you want. So just a dream situation. I. Mine's the layup. You want me to go first? Uh, yeah, sure. All of the, ours is yeah, yours, Mike. It's, but it's selfish, and yet it's for everyone. It's the selfish thing, but it's the right thing. Yes. Yeah. It's, Sometimes it's it's okay to be selfish. It is okay. It, or it is absolutely Marvin Harrison Jr. to the Arizona Cardinals. Marv is going to go early in the draft. There aren't very many teams, unless a team moves up and, and shocks us, but there are not many situations where there's a franchise quarterback this could, he can be the number one. It can be a great offense, and it just it works out for everybody. It works out for Cardinal fans. It works out for fantasy football fans. It works out for the people who have the 101 in rookie drafts in, one, in single quarterback where you don't have the situation that the Patriots take him and then the Cardinals take Malik Neighbors, and you go, oh, no, it's another Clyde versus Johnny Taylor situation. So let's just let this happen. Let us have this. Just just play Let, it by the – go chalk. Yeah. The, the way that C.J. Stroud just uh, spoke from the podium yesterday about Marvin Harrison, I don't know if you guys saw this. I did not. Yeah, he, I, he, I did watch it. He basically just said at the end, he's like, the team's at the top, just be smart. Don't, like, don't, don't be, be dumb. Don't be dumb. Like, he's clearly the best wide receiver. You know, the, so, uh, yeah, Cardinals fans, as we three are, want him, but it makes sense. But, I mean – they don't have a wide receiver. Right. Michael Wilson is their current wide receiver one. That's that's insane. And if you caught my song on socials, I'm going to save so much money. So much money. Because I will never have a need for pants. Never go back no, to that no. pants store again. I will never go. They if will be your gone. hometown team selects Marvin Harrison, your pants will fly off and you'll yeah. never need to wear them again. Exactly. All and right. That's so important. outside of our hometown <laughs> teams, the next most important thing are our personal takes. <laughs> so You know what mine would be. I know, I do you think, know what it is. I, I'm going to write down what I think it is. There's no way you don't write it down because because it's like a weird... Well, which team? It's a weird, like, stupid, competitive, like... Which team? Is it Bills? Win or lose situation. Who? And I didn't even okay, want to can, die on yeah. Adonai Mitchell Hill, <laughs> but it's like Adonai Mitchell to the Bills. And, you, mean, and okay. you will be dying. Man. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> unless, it's like, unless this happens, I'm going to be so... So upset if AD goes to the Bills. Because Jason and I have slightly differing viewpoints on Adonai Mitchell's, uh, I guess, prospects. outlook. Yeah, yeah, prospects in the NFL. It's become a, a, a fun draft day situation. And I did say to you yesterday when we were talking about it further, because uh, I know you watched more film on him and then you talked about his profile and there's, you know, there's lots of reasons on both sides. That's mm -hmm. why players go ahead of other players for reasons. But... I was like, you know how much the landing spot is going to define this so significantly, as well as not just what round, but the team. And so it's fun to have the debates. I really like Adonai Mitchell. I think he profiles to be a really impactful NFL wide receiver. I won't think that if he goes to Carolina. I will <laughs> think that if he goes to Buffalo. So yep. if it backs you into loving him on accident, that's funny to me. So yeah. that's what I'm rooting for. No, I I, I get that. Mine, and you can add the Chiefs. I mean, it could be the Bills or the Chiefs. Well, mine is Troy Franklin, a player that I I think is a very very talented. Turtle. Oh, you get, <laughs> I, I I think he's very talented. So I want the same thing for him. I want him to go to a quality landing spot. So I've got Troy Franklin to the Chiefs. I saw that mocked like a month ago and uh, got very excited. Let's have that happen. All right, into the news we go. News and notes from around the league. This is uh, being recorded slightly before you listen to it on Thursday. So if some news that is super obvious is missed, that's why I'm telling you what we know right now, including Cortland Sutton not showing up to voluntary workouts. He wants a new contract. 
I saw a stat he has 10 starting quarterbacks in seven years. That's not a way to get a rapport going. Like sometimes you just draw the short straw as a wide receiver. I think McLaurin's drawn that. I think for most of DJ Moore's career, that was the case. For Cortland Sutton, it certainly has been. And like the two outcomes for Sutton right now are if he goes back to, you know, if he's happy in Denver and, and plays this year, it's like rookie quarterback or Jarrett Stedham. So congrats. Yeah. Congrats on probably two more quarterbacks this year. So he's like, please pay me now. My stats will be awful at the end of the year. Yeah. So, and, and last year he was 59 for 770, but he had 10 touchdowns with Russell, who has always had a knack for getting the ball into the end zone. So he's a scary pick without really knowing who the quarterback is. Uh, also, the Broncos don't have like. Isn't Russell Wilson the third highest cap hit on the team or something like that? Yes. Oh, no. Yes. No, Russell's the biggest, but Sutton's the third highest right now. Yeah, so, I, I mean, you you might see something restructured with him. It doesn't I, even make sense. He's I, under I a contract for two more years of, like... It's his guarantee. He only has two million more guaranteed. Yeah, I don't see them changing this. If you look at their roster and who's on the roster long term, this is a team that's going to... Retool. In, in two years... It will the it will be one hundred percent Sean Payton's team from the ground up. There won't be a single holdover. So I don't I don't see any long term deal coming for Sutton. Which the last time I said that Cortland Sutton was not going to get a long term deal. <laughs> yeah. While I said that, news broke the, so his the new news, contract. So the news that we that have missed. That's very possible. Producer Sally, will you check and see if Cortland Sutton just signed an extension? We'll take a look. There is not a there's a non zero chance that but between recording yeah. and when this comes out. Oh, it's out, happening. It's gonna be great. You just earned him so much money. Yeah. Um Dolphins are planning to pick up the fifth year for Waddle. Jalen Waddle. Makes sense. He's been a very, very good wide receiver despite our disappointment in his fantasy production versus ADP last year. He's been great on the NFL. And field. a disappointment about like availability play to play. Sure. That does factor into how I think about Jalen Waddle is like fragile. Even though he doesn't miss a lot of games, he somehow misses a lot of plays. He still impacts the majority of games, though, and I think that's that's what matters to the Dolphins. All right, that is all I have for news right now. And like I said, if we miss anything as of this recording, we'll pick it up on the next episode of the show. Let's jump in. Running backs. All right, yesterday we talked about, or sorry, on Tuesday, we talked about the uh, 20 through 11 as we count down the top 10 running backs in our early rankings. This is not the same rankings you'll see in the UDK when it releases on June 1st. Those rankings, factoring in all of the rookies, they are all statted top to bottom, every team, every player, every stat. And uh, sometimes we're even surprised by our own, uh, you know, the stats versus our gut. This is more like, hey, who would we take right now? Who do, right. who do we think profiles to be the top 10 running backs? It's our consensus ranking, so we don't have perfect agreement. It's just the average. And so uh, we talked about a particular stat on the wide receiver episode, and I believe the number was about 3.7 top 10 wide receivers per year repeat as top 10 options. So year to year, there's turnover. Over the last 10 years, 2.9 running backs repeat as top 10 running backs from the previous years. Um, the most that has ever happened was five, and that was in 2020. So there were people that drafted running backs and were happier that year. But 2.9 is the average. Injuries are always a factor in that number. Um, so, you know, you can't really – you don't go into the draft going like, man, I, I hope I can guess which four of these top ten have a random catastrophic injury – and it makes sense that they're drafted where they're drafted. It's just a reality that you don't you don't build your team. And and I think I've learned this so much over the last ten years of of this show is like you don't build your team and just like your top three picks. You're like, all right, I'm set. You know, you have to have that mentality that you just build depth and strength for your roster, top to bottom. Pick one through your last pick, and realize that some things are going to happen. Yeah, that's it. It kind of th like this is why at the top of the draft you have such a. Uh, not a battle, but, you know, whatever, a disagreement on how do I build my team? Because the number for the wide receivers repeating, that's that's a way stronger probability that one of the top ten of last year is going to repeat. 
We we discussed that and, number as a bad thing. Right. We discussed it as like, look how few are Slight, slightly better number. I, I, mean, I mean, it's one more player. Yeah, but it, but in the game, thirty percent more. In the game of probability, it's it's a it's a an advantage. But if you hit on the running back, that math is right. I'm gonna let I'm tr this I. One of the ways I trust Jason is yeah, no, I is do with too. this I'm weird just, math that I, I, I have can't to do. I, I can't. I gotta like think about yeah. it. Yeah, if, if but, three running backs repeat, right, two point nine, one more would be thirty percent of three. You you yeah you tell yeah, him. whatever you, you tell, tell him, him whatever you say uh, man just, whatever. All right, it's also on, it's on. also point, one more <laughs> point of ten. Right, but probability. Yeah. Point, point being. Yep. But if you if you hit on the running back, more valuable, and then they repeat. Yeah, it's. it's provides way more value to your team but the the number is lower so do you go with the wide receiver that that is just to me like that kind of encapsulates a lot of the the argument of do I go wide receiver early or do I go running back early you can get into the psychology too of just like the experience you had last year is not the one you want to have this year if it went bad so sometimes people you know they don't just go with the numbers they go with the emotions yeah, and like if I've missed on running backs for two years in a row, maybe I'm making a pivot to wide receiver because I saw that guy that made the wide receiver pick and it worked out well for him. Yep, or her. So um, I still think finding a running back is the greatest advantage in fantasy football if you hit on one early. Uh, but that doesn't mean that I am locked in. We we want to stay water. We want to see how the draft flows, and let's jump into the top ten. Number ten, Isaiah Pacheco, twenty five years old. Jason and Mike, you both have them at 10. I remember going through the early rankings when we were putting our numbers in there. I was a little surprised you were both as bullish as you were. I have him at 13, outside the top 12. Um, but all of us have him currently ranked higher than his best ball ADP. It's true, which is 14. So a uh, lot of opportunities, solid workload. It all worked itself out last year. 4.6 a carry. Runs like he is absolutely uh, – wait, we probably have his player yeah, drop we, here. Yeah. The yeah, man, I mean, just furious at the ground. He hates nothing more in his life than turf and grass. He hates it. He is Punish it. so angry with that <laughs> ground, the way that he runs. It is, it is. Uh, stomp, stomp, stomp. Man, could you imagine being like a gardener watching this man run or someone that cares for this lawn that, I mean, you've got to yeah. really have a problem with Pacheco. Unless he's aerating. Oh, very nice. Yeah, yeah. have the, like the big cleats on. <laughs> He's just like, hey, Pacheco. It's his training regimen. Yeah, is they're like, hey, Pacheco, get on the field. We just reseeded. Put put on the put on the super cleats. Tear that thing up. He's vicious. <laughs> That's uh, a good plan. But the the what happened with the Chiefs winning the Super Bowl two years in a row now has shifted them to a defensive team, to a team that look they lost Tyreek a couple years ago. Travis Kelsey's getting older. We saw Travis Kelsey purposely used less in the games through the second half of the year to save him. He might not like it, but it was brilliant. It was smart. It is good football. It's the reason why in the NBA people are resting stars nowadays that they didn't use to. It's like, you know what matters is winning the championship at the end of the year and having our players fresh. Pacheco is becoming like, I mean, you'll never be able to say he's the center of this offense, right? You have Patrick Mahomes. But he really is becoming part of their identity, and it, it really happened more and more as the season went on, through the playoffs. He's their dude. I would be really surprised if next week they uh, do something to usurp this. And so, I, yeah, I've got him in my top ten, which obviously if we talk about how few players um, repeat year after year, well, that means that the majority of players are you know new this year to that top 10 Pacheco wasn't there I've, I've got him inside right now got 18 opportunities a game 84 total yards per game this is what he was averaging like that's that's nice and then the seventh he's seventh among all running backs in red zone touches that's that's where we want we'd, we'd love for him to get more or if you have Pacheco you'd love for him to get more carries inside the five if you have Mahomes you want them to never run the ball ever they also did what many teams have done this offseason and bring back a, a not very good player to be the backup. Right. Like they did Chase Edmonds in Tampa, A.J. Dillon in Green Bay. They brought back Clyde in a one-year deal. Number nine, Travis Etienne. He is, uh, his best ball ADP is RB11. He's 25 years old. I have him at eight. Jason at nine, Mike at 11. He was the RB3 last year. Uh, I don't think it's necessary to 
get too far in the weeds and like try to criticize that performance. I know the consistency wasn't there, but he also won you so many weeks on his own. It showed his capability. The team said before last season they wanted to reduce his workload. They didn't do it. They couldn't do it. They said the same thing this year. I don't believe they will, and I believe he is so talented. So I, to me, he's one of the players very likely to end up on my rosters because of where I have him ranked compared to, you know, if he's two or three running backs later, I'd rather have him over Pacheco. Uh, you guys have him not very far off either. So I, I think we all have a great deal of confidence that ETN is going to be the workhorse for Jacksonville. I thought, like when I was ranking ETN, I knew I would have him lower than than most people. I was kind of surprised to find out that his best ball ADP is right where I have him. So, I mean, it's it's nice that at least my my overarching thoughts on ETN are not far off from the way that, that the confidence that people have. But for me, I mean, the the second half was it was brutal. It was brutal. It was a 17-game a pace of 800 rushing yards. The, rece the reception's very nice, uh, but it just in the in the fantasy playoffs, like if you had ETN, we were just Jay, we were just talking about dynasty running backs, and you were flexing on us mm -hmm. that you have these these guys, mm -hmm. and it's like, well, why didn't you win the championship? You're like, well, in the playoffs, these, these three guys really really hurt people, and. It, I'm not just saying like, oh, well, he, his these two really terrible weeks at the worst possible time, that happens. But just the second half, the second half of the season being not great, mixed with, I guess it comes down to what Andy's talking about. Can they find a player to spell Travis Etienne? Because the team has repeatedly said over and over that's what they want to do, but right now they probably don't have that ability. He caught 58 passes. Yeah, that's delightful. You know, and he's very capable in that area. So, to me, he has a nice baseline. Great touchdown upside. We saw it multiple times last year when he went on runs of three straight games, two touchdowns a game. I, I have a great deal of confidence because there's not a lot of young, talented workhorse backs that catch the ball. He's in that category. Yeah, and he plays for not a bad offense. You know, right. even if this is not an elite offense, there'll be plenty of scoring opportunities. That's really where his fantasy points came. But 73 targets on the course of a season, when you take out Cal Calvin Ridley and replace him with Gabe Davis, you expect his involvement will stay there. The running back core uh, projects to stay the same this offseason and projects to be poopy behind him. So uh, I think Travis Etienne is a pretty safe pick with decent upside like he obviously I mean he finishes the running back three so he's got the upside to finish in the top five all right quick break and back with number eight on the rankings all right at number eight comes newly yoked I don't know if you saw the picture oh I, I haven't Devon A. Chan tell me I gotta go look up some A. Chan pictures I'm in yeah, he's 22 years old. What do you do? Achan is, um, I think, a player that is going to be exhilarating slash frustrating. I think that's the truth. Like, if you're taking one of our top 10 running backs, there's nobody that I think I would feel less confident as my one. <laughs> I, I, dude, I can. I know I have. Do you know? Are, were I, you laughing at that, or were I, you looking I, at the picture? No, I'm laughing okay. at that. I'm okay. laughing at what you said because I because I am in complete agreement. I am an A chan. Stand. He's a nervous number one. I was like all in on A chan last year. Had him in a lot of leagues because I believed in him and the talent and all that. It was a wildly fun, awesome electric ride. I'm just so terrified, <laughs> man. It's like. You love it, Moster. You it, talked about you, it on the last show, too. Absolutely. I, I love this running scheme. I think there's going to be a ton of points, and I think Devon Anchan is going to be great. It's basically this. If you know, and we don't, but if you know for sure that no matter how explosive a player is, he's going to miss a ton of games, if you know you're not going to have him for six or seven games, is that a good draft pick? And the answer is going to be no. The answer That's is... That's too many, but what if but three to four? Three to four is fine because most running backs miss a couple, like the, yeah. most running backs miss two games. So, uh, you know, if he's missing three or four and he's explosive in the others, I'm totally down for that. But when I when I stare down drafting Devon Achan, I really do have like 
I feel like I'm like, I love this player. He's so great in the system. He's going to be great when he's on the field. I'm not confident he's going to be on the field. Six and a half games he missed last year. Three separate injuries, if you include the preseason. So he missed week one, missed a four-game stretch, played one, um, one attempt and missed the rest of that game and then was out the following week. When he was on the field, it was explosive. It was dynamic. It was, you know, must-see television. He had 800 rushing yards. <laughs> He ran the ball 103 times. He was. I mean, <laughs> watching him, he was the most fun player to watch last make year. Sense. I, him and CJ Stroud were easily like, I just could not take my eyes away. Every single time you handed him the ball and you run that little, you know, that, that little zone read where he's just poof, let me foot in the ground and he's gone. Let me illustrate. Explosive plays. He was number one in yards over expectation per attempt. Number two was CMC, but the difference, he was at 2.87. CMC was 1.32. He averaged 7.7 .7 every time he touched the football. And the pictures I was talking about was just that he's coming into camp having put on weight, which for him, you've got to probably be, needed to. Yeah. You, you've got to be thrilled to see that because durability. I'm sure that that was the message of the offseason. These guys aren't aren't stupid. They want to be there and contribute every single week. And he wasn't able to do that. He probably had a lot of frustrating games on the sideline saying, I want to play football. So you you come back, you prepare yourself. Um, you know, if it really is a two man show without, you know, there were times last year because of injury that other players got worked in. Whether it was Jeff Wilson getting snaps here and there, or uh, I think Salvin Ahmed was still a part of the situation last year, right? I I do very much think it's going to be a two. Hurt. I think it's going to be a two man show, uh, barring injuries to either A. Chan or Mostert. That is what they want. They want it to be a fifty fifty split. So. Exciting draft pick. And a, and a tiny little bonus nugget. <laughs> he lined up in the slot. We call that an H-hand nugget. Yes, that's fine. That's fine. Tiny little bonus nugget. Yeah. He lined up in the slot on 35% of his pass plays. Like, that's the highest among running, the highest percentage among running backs. Again, smaller sample because he missed so many games. But are you but, comfortable with him as your one? Oh, we, man. We talked about it. I don't think I am. I, as you're, I think I'm going to watch from afar. From it would just be shifting things. You got to do the mosaic puzzle in your head of like, I'm drafting him as my one because I have to. If I don't draft him as my one, I will not get him on my team. So this other guy that I'm going to draft, maybe he's a little bit more of the consistent type of a archetype. I there will be no player. I, I think I think I would do. I like at the end if I'm set up where. I'm in kind of that range where it makes sense to to take a chan. I'm going to do it. I don't think there's a player I'd be more. There will be many players I'm more afraid to have on the opposite side of my exactly. team this year. Uh, when I I think I had to play against Devon a chan like three times last year because it got traded or or, or at least mm -hmm. a couple times, and it was like it was torture because every play could end your week. So very. I dynamic exciting player that we have sitting at uh eight yeah i'm in I'm wait you're back in, <laughs> I'm back in. <laughs> oh just, gosh just going through the like you saw the pictures see, you i can figure out the rest yeah. but you can't figure out upside like this yeah you really can't he can win you but how many touchdowns he, can these two guys have well the the thing with a-chan is well, a-chan's touchdowns are gonna be a-chan's <laughs> touchdowns are 11 are, total gonna be from outside the five you know raheem Mostert when they get to the goal line a-chan's not gonna be there the, but Achan can easily bring a 20, 30, 40, 80 yard touchdown all the time. And that kind of explosiveness is very rare. Right now, you don't technically have to take him as your RB1. He, he is being drafted as an RB1 and RB, uh, as the RB8, but that's about the middle of the second round. So if you wanted to go RB, RB, you could go Bijan and Achan. And, you know, someone that, you know, has a little bit higher volume, you, you feel safer with his. Uh, That'd be a pretty exciting tandem. I. The two numbers that are very tough is, you know, touchdowns, smaller guy, how predictable will they be to repeat, especially long touchdowns, very hard to repeat. Mm -hmm. And then the the insane numbers are not going to be the remainder of his career. He's no. not going – when you get more opportunity, you're not going to be 7.7 .7 a touch. You're not going to – you know, he even had games last year where the big play didn't happen and he played a bunch of snaps and that ended up being, you know – um running back 51 for a week when he was seven for 24 um it, you know if he gets more work he'll be okay regardless of those it's just a little bit of a gamble but 
Yeah, I, I think a fun in the, one. In the end, you just got to take your gamble on the on the injury. I I do believe if he's healthy and he's active, he's going to score a lot of fantasy points for your team. At number six, we have two players that are tied there. So we'll start with uh, Saquon Barkley. It's Barkley and Gibbs. Saquon arrives in Philadelphia, and it's exciting. It's exciting to have the opportunity to see him play someplace else. He has always been such a, like, put it all on my back to support this offense situation. He helped people last year. He really did. It's just new home. I mean, he had he, he was he was tough. Running back five, then forty six, then eight, then thirty five, then five. It was like, can he get into the end zone for a team that doesn't get to the end zone very often? He was six on the year. Uh, I mean, I mean, when they when they lost Daniel Jones and they're playing a hodgepodge of backup quarterbacks with no wide receivers, a poor offensive line, it was like a sacrificial lamb out there it was just right. keep giving the ball to Saquon and hope he can do something and and some of the every other game he did and every other game it was like I, I'm tired bro. like I'm just <laughs> sick of this I'm thrilled that he's out of New York and he's playing behind he's going from a bad offensive line to one of the best offensive lines he's gonna see giant holes um to run through and you've got Jalen Hurts at quarterback two great wide receivers I think he helps the passing him I think the passing game helps him the issue will always be around the goal line you're I don't care if you've got Saquon if you're at the one unless the tush push no longer works without Kelsey there which I, I still think it's more Jalen Hurts than uh Kelsey under center I I believe he's I going to score like he's 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 going to be involved in the passing game. He's going to see running lanes he hasn't seen him forever. He's going to be a workhorse running back for a great offense. I, I'm going to go on record. I have no concern about Tush Push whatsoever. You brought him in there. There's a different type of, uh, like he's a different archetype of running back than what you've had. He's the man. Like mm -hmm. he's the man like you're last year. If they were on the two, they could tush push to the one, then tush push again. Like he's going to get opportunities. He only scored six times and ended up the RB 12. I, I am putting that out of my mind. I'm making a formal declaration of that. Now I, I could, you could see an offense that's more well-rounded. You know, you, you've got pass catchers. You just paid Devonte Smith. You've got Goddard. You've got AJ Brown. You've got, you know, the legs of Jalen hurts. And so there could be games where Saquon Barkley's just not, as big of a factor as you knew he was going to be in New York in terms of opportunities, but it will be made up for an efficiency, I think. It's completely fair to put that outside of your mind because, I again, when they get to the one, it will be a touch push. But there were 14 carries inside the five for DeAndre Swift last year. He had the opportunity. Exactly. And he got them to the one. Oh, he a was lot. so good at it. And Saquon will get them to the zero. To the zero. <laughs> to, the, to the kick. So I'm. Uh, I'm, I I think this is a really exciting thing to see. Saquon is still in his prime. He has not aged out. He's not over a, a, a cliff. He, he might not be, you know, breaking away 70-yard touchdowns uh, on the reg anymore like he did, you know, rookie season. But this is, this is going to be a great experiment. And you want to talk about someone that you can have a little bit more confidence in both the workload and um, the durability. I, I, would, I would put my chips much more on the Saquon side than the A-chan if they're next to each other in a draft. Mike, talk to me about Jameer Gibbs, 22 oh, years man. old. There's a similar conversation with him and Devon A-chan. They're both 22. They're both big play guys. They both have great offenses. Last year, Gibbs managed to finish as the RB10. He was a my guy. It was not great early. No, it took a while. But then there was a he, – he had his time in the sun – you know, finishing three, two, one in the middle of the year, seven, three, three, and 15 and 16. But there was some volatility because David Montgomery's a very good running back. Yeah, so he finishes the year with 182 carries, with, and it, it started pretty slow in those first four games, and then he was injured before the team really started to trust him a bit more. But 180 carries, over five yards in attempt, and on top of that, 71 targets, which – that was like that was the thing you knew you could kind of basically guarantee of where the when they took him in the draft when the Lions took him in the draft which was a b 
big shock of last year. If you if you've kind of lost context, that I mean that was so wild. But you felt like okay, well the pass catching is going to be safe. How much will the, of the groundwork are we going to get? And the answer over the second half was we we got a ton of it when it comes to red zone carries. You know, like once he was back from the injury, he was doing okay with that. Runs inside the five over the last three games: two against Minnesota, two against Dallas, not successful, and then one more against Minnesota. So he is. It is. It is very very similar. Oh, the even with Mostert and Montgomery, to, to like, the most yeah the, the 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 Dolphins and the Lions running back situation seems very aligned of like it is it doesn't feel like a bad strat to be like just crossfade <laughs> like okay so like some, David Montgomery yeah, some, league, some leagues I'll go A Chan and Montgomery some I'll take Gibbs at the top and then I'll take Mostert a little bit later and I'm just going to diversify that now, way Jason do you do you believe that both teams because this is what I believe that they will give both the young guys a little bit more work this year but neither of the old guys are done. Therefore, you know, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, Monty, f fifth in red zone um, touches. Is that your view, that there'll be more opportunity for both of the young guys? I, I do think they'll get both second-year players slightly more involved, but certainly not. They don't want them to usurp them and become the workhorse back. These are teams that want two awesome backs. They want each one to spell the other. They each have their own role. It's very similar. When you get down on the one, two, three yard line, I think it will be more David Montgomery than Gibbs. Now, we did see Gibbs still involved a little bit yes. later in the season, so I don't think they'll completely go away with him the way that I think they will completely go away with HN when they're you know inside the three. Both these players can score from us. I want all four. Like I like all four players. I think the explosive upside is worth taking the shot on Gibbs and HN and the the left for dead value of Mostert and Montgomery, those will be like auto picks for me. They're just how many games that David Montgomery played in did he not score a touchdown? Oh man! So he just so you know he played all but three games. So go ahead and tell me how many did he not score a touchdown? I, it had to be like two. It's three games. Three games he didn't score a touchdown. He he's he's great down there. They're not going to go away from him uh, with that offensive line. He's got the nose for the end zone. And, and Coach Campbell's not going to go away from that. Let me give you That's, a snap th count. That is though. the way for the Lions. Snap counts for David Montgomery to end the year, 35, 52, 39, 39, 49. So yeah, I think, I think huge that's... difference from the top of the year. The top of the year, 79, 71, 75. Yeah, I think that's what you're going to see is is 40 to 50% of the work going to David Montgomery. And yeah. that's enough, yeah. obviously, because he's got the touchdown role. He does not have the pass-catching role. That's like gone – all the way to Gibbs, so that's really the downside with with Montgomery. But I I love both players, and I do think you, you got to caution a little bit. Like you you know he had uh, Gibbs had two top three weekly performances in the two weeks that David Montgomery was gone, week seven and eight. So there you know that that's kind of pumping that up a bit. When when you look at once David Montgomery was back for a couple weeks. Like you said, Andy, the the end of the season, it was it was pretty fifty fifty on the split. It, it's tough. I, I it's worth mentioning. I have Gibbs at three overall, so I have him extremely high. You guys have him at seven. He ends up at six in our rankings. Um, also, the week when Gibbs missed time, Montgomery had like a top yeah, five number. So in. you do have for both of those situations. If one of them goes out, you have like a top three running back, which is kind of nice to know that that's mm -hmm. in the in the realm of. Um, possibility at five we're going to talk about jonathan taylor but we're going to take a quick break first all right jonathan taylor was not a a real party last year <laughs> uh it was it was a wait it was zach moss emerging it was a re-injury it was greatness when he was out there. It was greatness with a quarterback that's no longer there in an offense. We didn't get to – I mean, we didn't get to see Jonathan Taylor play football with Anthony Richardson. Like, yeah. we're, still, we're still waiting to see that, right? Yeah. So that is – um, you know, you can't both score a red zone touchdown, and Richardson is very well, active. Richardson could dump it off to him. Uh, on, uh, not like You know what I mean. Sure. 
You're saying you're, that, you're, like you're a, say, a rushing. You know what I meant. They they can't both run in a touchdown on no, the goal but, line. I mean, well, no. The, I genuinely the way you said that, I was like, they they can they can both score a touchdown. This they? guy, anyways. Um, Jonathan Taylor ended up with seven touchdowns last year. Uh, missed with a thumb injury weeks thirteen to fifteen, and then the first four weeks with contract fun. I think we all know the talent of Jonathan Taylor. We are a couple years now removed from the number one overall finish that made him kind of the lock number one pick. I mean, he, for whatever reason, the facts are the facts. He's finished as the RB 34 and 33 over the last two years. He hasn't got to play full seasons. Um, but on the, doesn't on, catch, you know, that'll be a thing to pay attention to. Can yeah. He catch the ball, you know? It, it will be, but it was once he was on field, it was incredible. His first game back, it was only 15% of the snaps. If you played him that week, which I would have, that would have felt really bad. But from then on, every time he played, he was at least a top 24 running back. It's all green on his consistency chart. And the the, the targets I, are worth talking about because I'm, look, a, the, the true numbers are a dual threat quarterback. It does lower the ceiling for running backs. Like this is just – it is – played out over time in statistics. So uh, he's here at five. We're not saying Jonathan Taylor's the number one guy, but we're saying he's very, very helpful for your team. And last year, even with uh, you know the with the backup quarterback play where you'd expecting more targets, it was still an average of two targets a game. I mean, this was this is not a – with the performance he had last year with the targets, that's not a high bar for Anthony Richardson to – choose to dump the ball off instead of running every once in a while. I think that with Richardson, he will get at least two targets a week. Yeah, the the two targets a week, I, th I think that number is relatively safe. But it's hard to imagine that with two tar – if, if that's like what he ends up with, that that has like a top three potential. You'd have to have, you know, 14, 15 rushing touchdowns, which is not outside of his uh, potential. Last year, he was the running back eight in points per game, and that is including his – 14% snap game uh, where he basically scored 15 fantasy points a game. He's a, he's a star player. Zach Moss is now gone, which is helpful for him to get even more of the workload. And we like Shane Steichen's offense, what we saw yep. last year, the pace of play. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm pretty bullish on uh, pretty bullish on Jonathan Taylor, a little worried about the receiving game. And number four, Kyron Williams. I have him at seven, Jason at two, and so – those balanced out the four there where Mike has him. Last year, you know, super impressive season. He saw 37% of the Rams' rush attempts and targets in the 12 games played. What is That's not true. 37% of the fantasy points came via touchdown. What, what, is, what, are, what are you trying to say here, Kyle? <laughs> Kyle, you get to chime in and defend yourself. He saw 37% of their attempts and targets when he played. He's basically saying he was 37% of the offense. Okay. Which gotcha. is an outrageous number because Christian think I, McCaffrey's 39%. Yeah, I, I must not have mental uh, put targets into my brain there because the rush attempts, obviously, he was their one back kind of kind of guy. But yes. uh, now I see what you're saying. So from an offensive focal perspective. He was 37% he of it. He was monstrous, which CMC was the only running back higher than that. But a lot of it was touchdowns. Um, you know, when he was coming out of Notre Dame, Mike and I were very in love with the film, didn't have the opportunity, and then when he did, it didn't look amazing. But then all of a sudden, it's a breakout campaign for Kyron Williams, and their their identity was Kyron Williams down the stretch. This was a home run, league-winning option, and now the question for people is, you know, do you believe? Jason is all in. He's got him at two. I've got him at two. That's what he was on a points per game basis last year you had an outrageous season from Christian McCaffrey one of the you know an all-timer where he scored 22.4 fantasy points per game Kyron was right there with him Kyron scored 20 fantasy points per game and half PPR uh, the third the number three was three points behind Raheem Mostert scored 17 fantasy points per game so you, you've already seen it and I've got to put him at number two right now before the NFL draft because he is the only player here that we're talking about on like the top of the top that like I don't know next week could change things for you know right. this, this is McVay has been 
a one back guy that's that's gotten fantasy value out of whoever it is. If it's Gurley, great. If it if he's deciding that um, uh, Cameron is out of the doghouse and it's him, great. Uh, Kyron was awesome. It's just a matter of he could be replaced because he doesn't have the the same pedigree. So we'll we'll see. But uh, two weeks from now. He he will be my number two if they don't do anything in the draft. Mike, what's his floor? I uh, it's assuming we make it through the draft. His floor to me would be a, a floor is and he's in the top ten regardless. So he he seems safe in that point of if he if we enter the season that he is clearly the guy. The only thing that can take him out is injury. It won't be he gets removed from the offense or things change. Sean McVay is. We we have a lot of data now for how McVay does things. He's really smart. He gets his running backs to he gets the defense to empty the box against his running backs, which really really helps them. the The red flag, which I don't even know if it's a red flag or just like a holy crap, is a, a stat of the only running backs to score 15 total touchdowns in 12 or fewer games over the last 40 years. It's Kyron and Priest Holmes. Which I don't. Not all of our audience is old enough to remember Priest Holmes, but that dude was that dude was gnarly, <laughs> gnarly. <laughs> it also, you might if you're not old enough, you also won't know what that word means. That so, is that fair. is true. That so, is a word like, yeah. from yeah, Priest like, Holmes like, era. Are they? Is that bad? Yeah. Then Mike set you up and then explained <laughs> it with words you won't understand. Uh, number three is Bijan Robinson. It was the, bussin' bussin'. Yes, thank you, Mike. Um, Bijan, 22 years old. He sits at number three in our early rankings. He had 86 targets with Arthur Smith. He saw a perplexing amount of time on the bench. Um, so this year, expectations are very high. You're going to have a drastically different offensive personnel situation this year. Kirk Cousins, um, just even how they line up on a weekly basis. There's so much optimism around Atlanta. We can't be let down again, right? I don't think we can. Um, I mean, fantasy football is made to break hearts, so it, of course we can. But Bijan is coming into a situation where he is in his prime, extraordinarily talented, and now is finally the workhorse, the projected workhorse, where you're not going to get Algier. Um, you know, we, we were halfway through the season where we were looking at the numbers of Bijan's carries inside the five and all the players in the league that had more than him and it was like backups to the backups who had experienced more goal line opportunities than Bijan while you've got Cordero Patterson and Tyler Algier Arthur Smith in their way down there <clears throat> and the, the freedom is there so I I do think with this off we've seen that uh Kirk is good at checking it down uh, Dalvin Cook was very valuable in the passing game uh, so I'm not worried about the uh, – you, you might go down from 86 targets. I don't think that that is a guarantee, though. I mean, you could stay there still uh, as a valuable piece of, of that. So this is an offense that projects to be good. They have the easiest strength of schedule going into next season. He's going to be the dude, and he's talented. So I don't, I don't, see, how, I don't see how it goes wrong. Number two is Brees Hall, also 22 years old. Mike and I have him at two. Jason hates Jason. him. Jason has him at four. Four is, you know, shame. Like twice as far down as me and Mike have him. Yeah. Double. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, Brees Hall is a, just such a good player. He, he's just such a good player. He had 95 targets, 76 receptions. He finished at RB4. The offense was one of the worst I've ever seen in my life. And you talk about what Saquon did in New York for a long time. That's what Brees Hall was doing it in New York. I mean, he was just putting the team on his back. Uh, the The targets led all the running backs. He's explosive with the ball in his hand. It, it's just so impressive. They had the least plays inside the five in the entire NFL, and he finished at RB4. If you fix the quarterback, and I don't mean like you have the best quarterback in the league. I mean, you move the ball down the field like an adequate, mediocre, middle-of-the-pack offense. If you can just do that, you won't be 31st in red zone plays. You won't be 32nd inside the five. You won't be 29th in points per game. You know, this was with a offensive line that ranked 27th. So you basically stacked everything against Brees Hall, known to man, and he said, well, just throw it to me and I'll figure it out. 
That was the plan. That, that was a lot of the time is, hey, Brees, what, yeah, what's, the, what's the play call? The call is, Brees, do something. <laughs> well, we can't hand it to him because when we do, he's got 12 guys on yeah. him. So we're just going to throw it right on the other side of that offensive line over and over and over. It was great. In fact, the last 11 games, he was on 119 target, 97 reception I, I don't pace. think that's happening. Well, no, and, and that's part of the issue here is like they're going to have a real offense this year that's going to look not like some comically inept, we don't know what else we can do other than dumping the ball off to Brees. Aaron Rodgers will be throwing to two good targets, and oh, the offensive line is better. So you, you're you going to have some give and take here. There's no way Brees catches the same number of balls because he doesn't need to this year. And that's a good thing because the offense is better and his scoring opportunities are up. But it's also awesome that you know he can. I mean, Brees is just, uh, you know, I love Brees Hall. I've got him four, sort but that's of. because I love all four backs. I love Christian McCaffrey. I love Kyron Williams. I love B. John Robinson, and I love Brees Hall. If you look at the numbers, now, do you remember he had 37 carries in the final week? No. <laughs> so he, he got the ball 37 times in the final week. If Sorry, you, Brees. That's rude. If you just took 23 carries off of that game, he would have been under 200 for the year. So it shows you, like, I remember this happening with Cleveland years ago with Isaiah Crowell and the Marvin Lewis right. years. Best laid plans running the football go away if your offensive line can't perform and if you're down by three scores or you can't produce in the passing game and you're just like, but you have to keep passing. So, you know, 200 carries is not the Brees Hall situation that you want as a team. Right. And so I think that you're going – I mean, he had, so good. He, had, he had a stretch of games last year where he averaged 1.4 a carry, 3, 2, 2, 3, 1. So he had a, he had a stretch where he was averaging 2.2 a carry over six games. It's not fair. Which is 450 yards on the year pace for the season. So he had an entire stretch where he didn't exist – well, as in a the running run, yeah, back. in the running game. And and ended up as the RB4. So, um, you know, I, I personally think he's going to be a great friend to Aaron Rodgers. Rodgers is coming off a, a devastating injury. He's old. He's not going to be mobile Rodgers like he was before. And he, is, he has shown that above all things, the most valuable thing to Aaron Rodgers is his historical completion percentage. So I think <laughs> he's willing to take the underneath balls with the running backs you know, that was one thing he was criticized for tremendously in Green Bay towards the end of his tenure there was, when are you going to, like, threaten the ball downfield anymore? He took the easy stuff. That's what he's going to do coming off an injury. Uh, Breach Hall has RB1 overall potential. and um, I mean, you you saw Aaron Jones uh, be very valuable for many years in the passing game. Um, you 49 receptions, 47 receptions, 52, 59 receptions with, uh, with Aaron Rodgers. So certainly Brees is great in the receiving game, and he'll be used that way. And then a player that needs no introduction, Christian McCaffrey sits at number one overall, finished at number one overall, had 1,500 rushing yards, had, uh, what is that, 21 touchdowns? Seven uh, through yes. the air, 14 on the ground. Had that incredible run of consecutive games with a touchdown. So, you know, you talk about consecutive um what does he have? Running backs with multiple seasons of 24-plus PPR per game. Which, that's outrageous. That's, which is insane. He's, yep. he's man. He's broken. He, he's, he, he's broken the game. Well, he went to a situation in San Francisco. Yes, he did. Where common sense prevailed. Like, Kyle Shanahan was like, he, like, did the fantasy thing. He said, all right, I'm a run. I love running the football. So, who's the best guy at that? All right, okay. I, I, I need to be able to pass it to my back. Who's the best at that? Okay, let's just trade stuff for him. All right. And then when you get him, uh, let's use him like we traded a bunch of stuff for him. Like <laughs> it's, every, every play. I mean, it, it and it doesn't fail. Like it, it's just right now you can't put anybody else above him. Um, He would have been the RB5 on the season if you only used his fantasy points from first down. <laughs> That's uh, – Shout out to Borg, uh, Borgogan for that hot – stat he had four games last year where he wasn't an rb1 and, and don't hear what i'm not saying he was still an rb2 in all four of those games but there were only four times he wasn't an absolute weak winner for you he's I mean, invulnerable we, we, he's invulnerable. well 
He's gone down to injury a couple of times. Though. Well, when on the field, yes. he's, he's as guaranteed for production as you can get since maybe LT. He's got to be the 101 in every draft. He's just too valuable as a Niner. You've got a good offense. He's I'm unstoppable. Just... He's still 27 years old. Like When you're talking about a guy with this kind of work ethic, and the, the age cliff, you expect to be around 30. Yeah, and for so, that kind of a production. Yeah. Dude, I saw a a, a reel of him talking about you know the just how insane his his work ethic is and like basically essentially what his father yep. is like yep. hey you want this is what you want okay we're train this we will train for you to become elite NFL it was the one where he was talking young, about his diet and everything yeah like just how regimented his diet is in high school it was you're in bed at 7:30 it was he had said yeah, no there, life. there was there was one game where he, our, your social life is pretty tough with that. Uh, he's like, uh, there was one game he had in high school, and he cramped up, and his dad's like, okay, I got your this. That will never ever happen again. Yeah, because of this, you're like, never gonna eat that the day before. Because of this hydration plan, it was, it was. You're like, okay, I I see it, I get it. You committed everything he's a to being psycho. this player. He's, he's the number yeah. one. I couldn't do it. He's the number one pick in fantasy, and and. Generally, what I like to do is I don't even put them in the draft pool. I just put them on my team, and then we do the draft. Oh, that's brilliant! You know what I mean? Just yeah. keep. I I don't even because it's, it's disrespectful to have him be drafted one. He just he should he be pre drafted. He's a pre drafted. He's a pre drafted. And so I I generally as the commissioner, I'll just put him on my team, and everyone's cool with it. Yeah. Right. I I like the idea that you just make the pick for everyone though. Yeah. If I'm, you have the first pick and you show up, you click enter draft from it. You why with why is McCaffrey on my team already? No one gets the first pick this year. No, it's I agree with Andy. No one gets it. And I look, it's a lot of uh it's a lot of great words for a guy that, you know, was the number one pick when he got hurt and missed time and yep. you know, that can always happen and three point seven of them repeat and McCaffrey could get hurt. But this is a player that you can't you cannot predict random injury, but you can predict you know how hard a player works. How many? How he, his body is held up to a huge workload for multiple years. Like, you know, th this is just as guaranteed as it gets in fantasy, and you don't need me telling you that. So, that's our top ten running backs. Let me run. Let me run it back. Pacheco at ten, Etienne at nine, A Chan at eight. Then you had Saquon and Gibbs tied at six. You had Jonathan Taylor um, sitting at five, Kyron at four. Bijan three, Brees two, and McCaffrey one. Do you want to repeat what we said at the top of the show, or would you rather not? You talk about uh, looking for writers. Yeah, if they go to FootClanHelp.com and apply, I don't want to repeat it again. Okay. Just let's leave it at the top. All right, let's close it down. That'd be gnarly, though, if we got some guys. Thanks for joining us. Catch you next week. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.